Matisse, thank you so much for coming on the show. Nice to meet you uh, through Zoom, but uh, uh, I'm a big fan of you, but I'm also a fan of what you've been doing while you're in the bubble. I want to go back, if you don't mind, to, to March. Uh, okay. NBA suspends the season. Uh, where are you? What goes through your mind? And w what were you thinking about? Yeah, it was, it's crazy because for me, like, just being in the NBA is crazy. I'm just trying to figure it out. And then as I, th I think I'm hitting like a groove and finding a routine, like everything gets shut down. And to have this be my life and, and kind of my new normal, and then just to be put on hold in a way that no one's ever seen before, is confusing. And it left me and a lot of guys in this, this limbo of just trying to figure out, well, what's, what's going to happen? What's, gonna, what's coming next? Or what do we do now? Yeah. It's been, it's been, it was weird. Uh, what, what did you think first when you heard about the bubble? The, for, I mean, it sounded crazy. I mean, it, it is crazy. Like, it, just the fact that we're even here. But when I first heard it, I'm like, there's, well, there's no way they can do that, right? And then what, what, what sold you? Do you like, okay, they really have thought this out. Was there a moment? Um, yeah, for me, it, it was a couple things. So we started, we started doing workouts back in Philly with our, at our team practice facility. And that was like a scaled down version of kind of what we're doing here. And I felt pretty good about that. And then they also sent out this um, manual, I guess, like this <laughs> of what they're going to be doing. It was like over 100 pages of the health protocols and everything. And I was like, I mean, I didn't read it, but I definitely saw that if they're going to put that much into a <laughs> thing to send to players, I was like, okay. They yeah, definitely put it, some thought. It's almost like the Apple terms and conditions. You're like, yeah, I accept. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna read it. Yeah, please. Uh, read it, yeah. Well, the reason why I, I I wanted to have you on because you've been documenting everything and putting it online. I think it's brilliant, and, and, and you're filming everything and editing it yourself, and mm -hmm. it sounds and looks great. Have you done this before? Are you, have you made videos? Kind of. My friends and I like you know you go on a little road trip or you go hang out or something. I would shoot some stuff, but we, it was never something I put out because. I mean, as you know, it's kind of hard to put yourself out there like this. And for me, like having not, I mean, in college and high school, having not really been a big, a well-known person or like a well-known basketball player, that was still very, very weird to me. And I would make these videos, we'd share them amongst each other. And then that was kind of it. But now that I'm here and like right before we left, I was going back and forth with my friends, like, this is an amazing opportunity, a, a historical moment. And I want to capture it and I know what to do because like we've been doing this, we've messed around with it before. And yeah, we, so we went back and forth a lot and then they're like, you know, just do it. I was like, yeah, might as well. Like get out of my comfort zone a little bit, put myself out there and hopefully some people enjoy. Good for you because it's worked. I also uh, saw that you, you saw the Rubik's Cube in like, I don't know, 90 seconds or some crazy <laughs> thing that I've seen before like online, but how did you learn how to do that? Was that something you, you used to do in high school or? I learned because in, when I was in college, um, it was like my sophomore, junior year, um, I was at the gym over the summer with my dad and there was this little kid playing the Rubik's Cube and I went up to him, he, he was probably like 12. I was like, there's no way you can solve this thing. Like, he seemed like a little kid. And he's like, oh, I can, I can, I swear. Like, get out your timer. I'm like, okay, here we go. So I hit start and this kid just starts going crazy with the thing and in 35 seconds he had solved it. And I was like, Okay, like it, it was really, really cool. And for me, I'm like, if this like 12 year old kid can figure out how to solve it in 30 seconds, like I, as a 20, at the time I was probably 21, I'm like, I can at least get it done to and some degree. I don't care how long it takes. So like after that, I went on Amazon, ordered a Rubik's Cube, and then just like sat on YouTube and studied. And now it's just like a party trick, I guess. Uh, also, <laughs> if, 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 People uh, watching our show have not seen your videos. They should. Uh, they're so interesting. But one thing is that you didn't really hold back on uh, conversations you're having uh, with your team, uh, even about uh, racial inequality and, and like mm -hmm. important conversations. Um, mm -hmm. Were you nervous to put that out there or talk about this yeah. or document that? Yeah. I mean, I was for all of it, for documenting it just because a lot of it was the opinion of other people and like that's a very intimate thing to share on someone else's behalf so for me it was it was nerve-wracking to document and also just to through editing it i wanted to put these guys who are being vulnerable and open and sharing and discussing these topics in the best light possible and i mean i hope i did them justice but i was really really 
happy that they were willing to share that with me so I could share it with, I mean, the world. It was great that you did that, and it keeps the conversation going, and, uh, you know, and uh, I, I just think it was really cool that you did that. And, uh, yeah, thank you. I saw that the players get to choose different words or phrases on their jersey, mm -hmm. uh, and you chose vote. Uh, yeah. Why, why is that important to you? Yeah, that's, that's one that, that is very, hits very close to home just because it's, it's really important to my family. And my dad, my dad grew up in, in Haiti. So essentially he's, to, to grow up with the immigrant parents, like they, he, he, they have a different perspective because they come from somewhere outside of the U.S. where we at times take a lot of what we have here for granted. And so for him to come from somewhere where their leader was a dictator, not a president, um, he really, my, my dad puts a lot of value on the vote because he knows what it's like to not have a voice and to live in a country where we have the opportunity to have a voice and be heard and make change with it is, I mean, it's an opportunity that you really, you can't take for granted. And I think that it's been amazing that I have the opportunity as a basketball player to spread this message on my jersey through my videos with you. And then also just that we have as a country and even with my generation, are making a huge effort to to make it a thing that we're excited about and passionate about and take seriously because it is something serious and it isn't something we should take for granted and i hope that in this next election that we have a much better turnout than we did four years ago uh i think we will uh i know you have a, a game tonight matisse uh, go out there and make more history tonight buddy uh I'm thank sorry. you so much for doing our show i appreciate it Thank you Batiste for having me. everybody. Check out Batista's YouTube page for more episodes of Welcome to the Bubble.